where we now marvel at the strategy at sea as we join the Canberra for the International Bridge Club. And so we say farewell to Vigo. As the tug leaves us and we leave Vigo Bay, welcome to the closing dramatic stages of the Canberra World Bridge Trophy. Not only the trophy, but £10,000 to the winner. And so for Zia Mahmoud, Robert Sheehan, Arturo Franco, if not for Christian Mary, unfortunately, everything to play for as we make our way back out towards the Bay of Biscay and home. In fact, it's really quite close between uh, Zia Mahmoud and Arturo Franco. Uh, Jeremy Flint, Robert Sheehan still in it at all? Yes, he's got an outside chance. Uh, the position at the moment, of course, is distinctly in Zia Mahmoud's favour. Let's have a look at the score. So Arturo Franco, plus 460 pounds. Zia Mahmoud enjoying a healthy but not unassailable lead, plus 1260 pounds. Christian Marie of France, I regret, must be considered as a man overboard, minus 1660 pounds. And Robert Chen, with an outsider's chance, minus 60 pounds. Of course, uh, Christian Marie does have one last faint hope, and that is that he might have with his partner the chance to bid and make two grand slams because they do there's a prize of 50,000. Exactly. What are the chances? They're getting slimmer as the boards slip by. Mm. What would the odds be would you say now? You said earlier on in the series it was about a hundred and something to one of two grand slams being built and dealt on successive hands. What are the chances now with only what 20 boards to go? Well of course as the hands slip away the actual odds against two grand slams back to back decrease. Mm. Right, well, let's start the play straight away. In fact, uh, Robert Sheehan of England, still with an outside chance of winning, is playing with Zia Mahmoud from Pakistan, and Arturo Franco is playing with Christian Marie. There's Marie on the left with his back to us, Robert Sheehan next to him with his back to us, and Zia Mahmoud on the left there, the present winner. It's Love All, and the dealer is Christian Marie, and for once, rather a lovely looking hand, Jaya. Yes, hand with really exciting prospects. Two six card suits. A rarity. And not only two six card suits, a major suit, hearts, headed by the ace, king, queen. Some players would open that with a two bid. That would be a bad mistake, and not one that Christian Marie would make. And he opened with a perfectly orthodox call of one heart. And here we see Zia Mahmoud. And if Marie has an attractive two suitor, Zia's got a better one. Now, many players would think this is a moment to do something dramatic, make a jump over call, cue bid the opponent's suit. But Zia made by far the best tactical approach, which was to see which way the wind blew before he declared his full strength. And he contented himself with a simple over call of two clubs. Arturo Franco had a rather poor hand, no particular support for his partner's suit, so he passed. Sheehan hadn't got much, and I think many players would pass on his hand. But in fact, he decided to raise to three clubs, I think for t tactical reasons. Marie, in the same sort of vein as uh, Zia, didn't disclose all his strength with one bid, also went quietly with a bid of three diamonds. Still playing possum, Zia bid merely three spades. Having passed on the first round, Arturo Franco felt that he, after all, had four diamonds, so he could support his partner uh, in diamonds, and he bid four diamonds. Scherner already said enough, if not too much, and so he passed. And now Marie decided the time was ripe to show that he had a really good hand in case 
for example, uh, Arturo, who had passed originally, had ace to four diamonds. If he'd got as much as that, they could make six diamonds. So he cubed his void with a bid of four spades. And Zia, patient as ever, merely bid five clubs. Arturo Franco, having passed on the first round, he's heard that cue bid. He thought, well, I'll take the opportunity to bid five diamonds. That's not especially encouraging. Shearn had no more to offer. Christian Murray gave this quite some thought, and I think rightly bearing in mind his position in the tournament, he had a little bash, and he bid six diamonds. And Zia, conscious of his position in the tournament, I think probably for that reason, and for that reason only, decided to bid seven clubs. He didn't think he was going to make it. He was making a sacrificial bid against the six diamonds which he feared that his opponents might make. Arturo Franco uh, was well aware they couldn't make seven diamonds. This is a situation where Zia couldn't be permitted to play seven clubs undoubled. So if he passed, that would have been a strong bid in this sequence. So he doubled, saying, partner, I think we've gone as far as we can go. Let's see if we can extract a small penalty from them. Nothing from Schoen. A disciplined pass from Marie. And a fatalistic one from Zia. So the grand stand bid by Zia Mahmoud, South. And the lead is to come from Arturo Franco on his left. Arturo Franco, in fact, hidden at the moment behind Robert Schoen, but there he is, he leads. And Robert Schoen puts down his hand as dummy. And so he's elected to make the standard lead, the Jack of Hearts, that we may recall was Christian Marie's first bid suit. So I thanked his partner gravely, and Christian Marie encouraged with the Eight of Hearts. Might have overtaken it one. Might think, but still. So the grand slam is down at trick one, first trick to the defence. No fifty thousand pounds going on this hand. So Archario switches to the Queen of Spades, and Murray has the satisfaction of scoring his singleton trump. Plays the Ace of Hearts. So that's three down. Now comes the Queen of Hearts, but Zia can afford to rough that with the ace and draw trumps, and he has enough trumps in dummy to rough his losing spades. So he was three down, but he had a hundred honours, and so the little escapade only cost 400 points. As you can see, of course, uh, Marie and Arturo could not have made six diamonds because they had to lose the ace of clubs in the south hand and the ace of diamonds in the north hand. So it was what we call a phantom sacrifice, justified only by Zia's commanding lead. Right, on we go to the next hand, and it is still Robert Schoen playing with Zia Mahmoud, and still Christian Marie playing with Arturo Franco. Uh, Franco and Marie, that's Marie with his back to us, Franco facing us, have a game. Uh, Zia over on the left-hand side with the glasses, and he, in fact, is the dealer on this hand. And to the rich go good, uh, godly, worldly goods. And here, Zia has some more worldly goods in the shape of an excellent seven-card club suit, 16 points, two aces, but not a hand on which to make anything but a, a minimum opening bid. See how the wind blows, and he bid one club. Arturo Franco, that's rather an interesting sort of hand. He's only got 11 points. But he's got a seven-card diamond suit. Sort of hand, if partner has some good fitting cards, might develop very well. Anyway, he made a quiet overcall of one diamond. Robert Chern hasn't got much, but he had got seven points. And he took the opportunity to show his spade suit with a bid of one spade. Back to business, and no, normal business for Christian Murray. Not much, and he passed. And on this occasion, Zer decided that it was right to show 
his powerful hand, and he did so by making a cubid of Arturo Franco's suit with two diamonds. And this, I think, is a rather dubious call myself, because that bid commits his side to game, and it's usually unwise to do that unless you're certain of which strain you're going to play in. Anyway, that's what he did. Arturo Franco thought his side was now outgunned, saw no purpose in any further competition and passed. And Robert Sheehan wants to try and put the brakes on, makes the most depressing bid available, which is a return to Zier's first suit, clubs, and he bid three clubs. Nothing from Marie. And now Zier's really got to try and get himself out of the muddle he's created with that previous bid. He doesn't know where he wants to play this hand, and so he now bid three hearts. Arturo Franco passed. And rather a subtle bid by Schoen here. You see he's had a gun pointed to his head. He's got to bid something. And even though he'd only got four spades, he thought the best he could do for the moment was to reflect where his values lay. And he bid three spades, a bid which one would only make with a top-class player. Nothing from Marie. And Zia, having dallied, as it were, with the thought of playing in three no trumps, decided that was no good anymore, and bid five clubs, which settled the auction. And there they were in five clubs. And the lead coming up from Arturo Franco facing us. And there it is, and Robert Sheehan puts down his hand as dummy. Zia Mahmoud to try and make 11 tricks with those cards. Now the two of diamonds, an interesting choice, and that is already a signal, because he can't only have four diamonds, and what he's saying is, if you get in, partner, please play back the lure of the two suits, not including the trump suit. So in this case, he's asking for a heart return. So that's the first trick to Mahmoud, wanting 11, don't forget. So Mahmoud wins that and plays the Queen of Clubs. And now, let's have a look at Franco's hand. <coughs> and this is rather interesting, isn't it? Because study it for a moment from Franco's, uh, seeing Franco's hand, remembering the bidding. And he's going to obviously win the Ace of Clubs, and he's obviously got the Ace of Spades. And there's that King of Hearts sitting there, uh, over the Ace Queen in the south hand, which appears to be another impregnable trick. So, from his point of view, this seems to be really quite good. Zia's going one down, one would think. He wins the ace of clubs. Well, plays a diamond in the hope that it's uh, his partner, Marie, who's got a singleton. Unfortunately, it isn't. Marie has to follow with the king of diamonds, and Zia roughs. So, Zia draws a round of trumps, discard of a diamond from Franco, and there goes the defence's last trump. Now Mahmoud plays a spade, and Arturo decides to take that. He's got to hope that Mahmoud is really short in spades, that he's got um, a singleton spade. But he's in, he's in trouble because he can't stop dummy obtaining the lead. And that is absolutely fatal, you see, because the, the queen jack of spades to say nothing of the Jack of Diamonds, will afford sufficient discards so that Mahmoud can rid himself of the Queen and Two of Hearts. That in the south hand, he can get rid of his losing hearts. And so, poor Arturo, who started with three tricks, apparently has only made two. And so, Zia made his contract. Mahmoud, the magician, undoubtedly one of the very best players in the world. In fact, with all modesty, he would claim that he is the best. But how did he start? Well, I, I could give you many answers. The truth, in fact, was I actually qualified as a chartered accountant when I was about 20 or 21, and I went back to Pakistan, where I came from. And at that stage, the, the girls in our country were very restricted in their movements. So for a young bachelor to have enjoyment, usually you had to try and make a liaison with a married woman. 
Um, I became infatuated with a very pretty girl, but the only thing was she told me that the only place she could meet me was in the bridge sessions which she used to go to every day where her husband wouldn't attend. And I said, well, I'll come and join you there. She said, can you play bridge? So I said, well, uh, and I quickly read a book on Gorin and attended the next day. Within a week, I was so hooked on bridge that I said goodbye to her and fell in love with bridge. Zia Mahmoud. Right, because they're playing in Chicago, they've all pivoted round and changed partners again. This time, Zia Mahmoud is playing with Christian Marie and Robert Schoen on the left there, facing us with the glasses, playing with Arturo Franco. And it is Marie who is the dealer. His opponents are game. Marie has got his usual collection of rubbish, but at least he's got a little distribution, but not enough to open the bidding, and he passed. Arturo Franco, well, got two nice five, uh, four, two nice major suits, five spades and four hearts, but only nine points, and he passed. Now, Zia Mahmoud has really rather a poor hand, only nine points, and even that's flattering it with that queen of spades alone but for technical reasons or tactical reasons concerned with playing chicago he elected to open one down it isn't really a psychic bid but anyway it's good tactics playing chicago robert Schoen, most people would pass thinking well my main strengths in their suit but it's a good idea to get into the bidding on this type of hand because you know that the diamonds are on your right, and if you can find your partner with a heart fit, well, the hand could play well. So he overcalled with one heart. Marie responded naturally with one spade. And Arturo Franco, who's got a jolly good hand in support of hearts, no beating about the bush for him, four hearts, he said. And that became the final contract. Four hearts to be played by Robert Schoen, South. And Mary has led, and Arturo Franco's hand has gone down as dummy. And so, uh, King of Diamonds, a lead, and I think that Robert Schoen will probably give this a little bit of thought how he should play before he even contributes a card from trick one. And I, I can forecast, I think, what his thoughts will be about. You see, this is the sort of hand that he knows that the spades won't break because they've been bid on his left, he knows the diamonds won't break because they've been bid on his right, and therefore he's got to utilise all his trumps and dummies separately, i.e. on cross rough lines, in order to make his tricks. There's seven of diamonds from dummy, and wins that trick with his ace. Plays a diamond back to prepare the cross rough situation. Eight of clubs discarded on his right, and Zia wins with the jack. That's one trick each. Zia switches to a club. She fearful of a trump switch, goes straight in with the ace of clubs. And now this merry little game starts. Plays a diamond, roughs that in dummy with dummy's three of hearts. His third trick, leaving ten, of course. Sheehan's a great man for checking his calculations. Um, it's perfectly obvious to me, and I think probably to him, what he was going to play. But he, just counting, or recounting, he's counted already. Wondering if he dare play a club, I think, just to make certain that those communications don't go wrong. Possibly reflecting, could marry a psyche to spade? Is there any danger in that? Could be thinking about the win of the 330 at Haydock. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sheehan has a reputation of being one of the the slowest players in the game and after thought he did play the ace of spades as we thought he would down came the king on his right continued with a small spade from dummy the queen he roughed that and now that jack of spades is established in dummy went on with his plan played another diamond roughed that in dummy with a four of hearts 
Mm -hmm. I use a jack of spades. See how rough that. No trouble. Sherman can over rough with a ten. So that's seven tricks. Now he plays his last diamond. Can rough that quite safely small because he knows he has got one. And the ace of hearts in dummy. Well, he plays a club in the hope that the defence will make some catastrophic error to give him an over trick, but of course they won't. And they played a, a heart, and he made the ace of hearts in dummy and the king of hearts in his hand, and he made ten tricks. And the great thing, when you're playing a cross rough, is to count the side suit winners first, that's to say your side suit aces, and then see how many tricks you need from the trump suit. And if that's enough, well, it's fine. If it's not, well, you may have to do something rather fancy footwork. Right, well, it is still uh, Zia Mahmoud playing with Christian Marie, still Robert Sheeran, who we've just seen playing with Arturo Franco. In fact, here, Marie and Mahmoud have a game. That's Marie with his back to us, Mahmoud facing us. And the dealer is Arturo Franco there on the left at the back. And Arturo Franco got a sprinkling of high cards, <laughs> ten points, not enough to open the bidding, and he passed. Zia Mahmoud, again an attractive hand, Good five card suit, avoid, and he opened one spade. Robert Shearn also got an attractive shape with avoid, made a natural overcall of two clubs. Christian Murray, well, he hasn't got much, but he's fed up with saying no bid, I suspect, and so he bid that solid five card diamond suit. Well, solid for poker players, anyway. Two diamonds, he said. And Arturo Franco thought, well, if everybody's bidding, why shouldn't I? And rather typically, in he came with two hearts. Sir so, uh, made a natural bid, supporting his partner's powerful diamonds. He's got one or two himself, and he bid three diamonds. Robert Sheehan sees that his hand fits very well with Arturo's, who's bid hearts, and so he jumped straight away to four hearts. And Marie, at last, this were not, was an opportunity for revenge. This really was. They were in four hearts, and there he was. Juicy business. His partner's opened the bidding. He's got ace, jack, ten, six of hearts. I'll teach you. Double. No bid from Arturo. And now it was Zier's turn to punish Marie and instead of standing the double of four hearts, what does he do but removes it to five diamonds? Pass from Sheehan. <laughs> Disappointed pass from Marie. Ha! And what could be better than that, says Arturo? <laughs> Doubly, double. <laughs> and <laughs> nothing. <laughs> that Zia could do, although I think he knew perfectly well he'd made a bad mistake. Should have left a uh, partner's decision alone. And Sheehan made a disciplined pass. And Marie, <laughs> he probably wanted to weep and knew he wouldn't be able to claim a hundred honours. So the unfortunate Christian Marie, with his back to us here, playing in five diamonds doubles, and Arturo Franco has led down goes Zia's shame-making dummy. Well, we can't see Marie's face at this moment, but anyway, there's the <coughs> opening lead of the Queen of Clubs. And, of course, it is utterly infuriating when you have the nutcrackers, as it were, around your opponents and your partner removes the double. Anyway, he had to address his mind to playing in five, uh, five diamonds double. So he followed from dummy. And overtook it with the king, and Marie followed from his hand. Sheehan continued with the ace of clubs. Marie forced to follow. Franco followed. And now Marie needs all the rest of the tricks. He needs all the rest of the tricks, and I think we can see that that's going to be an uphill battle. And now Sheehan played a low club and sensing that the diamonds were on his left 
and in an attempt to retain control of it, Murray discarded on that. Franco made a good play of discarding as well, and so, surprisingly, Murray was permitted to win that trick in dummy with the eight of clubs. So he played the nine of clubs in dummy, which was covered, roughed and over roughed. So now he's one down. He's already one down. Franco switched to a heart, which went round to the queen and Murray's ace. And now and only now <coughs> does he start on diamonds. Franco elected to split his honours, so Murray win, won that in dummy with the ace. So it's three tricks each. And played the jack of diamonds, which forced out the king. The best that Franco could do was to play a diamond back, but Murray, by keeping his cool, had restricted the penalty to a true trick defeat. <coughs> I should think there were some sharpish words after that deal, J.F., between Mary and uh, Zia. Yes. Well, as a matter of fact, of course, it is an elementary point that when you have reached that level in the bidding, uh, you really should not disturb your partner's double. It's almost insulting, and the only explanation was that Zia, at this point in the tournament, is sitting on the, on the fence. He's got a big lead, and he doesn't want to sustain a big adverse swing. Sensible for him, rather bad luck for Marie. I thought it was much worse than bad luck for Mary. I mean, he's a very good player. If he doubles in a situation like that, he expects to get the opponents down. A practically unforgivable bid from Mahmoud. In normal circumstances, it would be unforgivable, yes. Um, I think we've been rather indulgent with Zia and honed in a bit on poor Arturo's errors. And, you know, watching this program carefully, I think I've been struck by the high quality of Arturo Franco's card play. Of all of them, I, we've seen one or two little errors in defence, but his dummy play, for me, has been the best of the quartet. Mm. Let's have a look at the score as we come into the last lap of the race and see who is winning now. So, Arturo Franco, who was winning £460, has advanced to plus £540. Zama Mood, who was winning £1,260, has declined, some might think deservedly, to £980. Poor Marie... Minus 1660 when it started, minus 1800 now. Robert Chern, who was losing only 60 pounds, has now gone into the plus and is an outsider in the race to the post with plus 280 pounds. Joe, thank you. We'll be back next week for the grand finale. Until then, good night.